Tonight on NAZ Today, we bring you more on Governor Jan Brewer's recent decision to veto legislation. Plus, we talked to a local Flagstaff resident who competed in the Boston Marathon. Good evening and welcome to NAZ Today. I'm Xavier Rangel. And I'm Elizabeth Ball. Thanks for joining us. On yesterday's broadcast, we broke news of Governor Jan Brewer's decision to veto House Bills 2339 and 2527. Additionally, Brewer vetoed Senate Bill 1211. The bill would begin have given ranchers the ability to kill endangered Mexican gray wolves if they or their livestock were being attacked. Brewer vetoed the bill, saying she felt it was unnecessary and interfered with federal law. Right. Now, Brewer has also chosen to veto House Bill 2367, which would have forced able-bodied Medicaid recipients to be employed and would have limited their health care. Brewer vetoed it in favor of helping those with Medicaid keep their insurance. Four small fires were found in the front yards of Flagstaff residents yesterday afternoon. The fires ranged across various yards on North Schweitzer Canyon Drive, and officials suspect the fires were started intentionally. No injuries have been reported, and the case remains under investigation. The Flagstaff Fire Department would like to rem remind residents to remain wary of red flag warnings this week, which have been in effect since Tuesday due to high winds and low humidity, meaning higher risk for fires and fire danger. Well, earlier this week, more than 35,000 runners participate in the 118th Boston Marathon. That's right, and Flagstaff's own Nick Arsenaya placed seventh of all the men who competed. Nick stopped by the studio to talk with, with Abby Barinholtz and tell us about the experience. The Boston Marathon took place this past Monday. Today I'm joined by Flagstaff's own Nick Arseniaga, who took seventh place in the marathon. So Nick, how does it feel to have taken seventh place out of thousands of runners? Uh, it feels great, very exhilarating. Um, going to uh, these big races, uh, Boston Marathon in particular, with the events that happened last year, uh, we wanted to go out there, the Americans wanted to go out there and just put on a good show, have great performances, and um, just basically go out there and run as well as we can. That's uh, basically how we were intending to uh, show our you know, tribute to uh, the Boston crowds and like, the race itself, just uh, show the city of Boston that we, are, we support them 100%. And um, going into this race, uh, finishing seventh place, that's the highest I've finished in uh, Marathon Major. So it's a great feeling just being able to be out there in the top ten and. Uh, having a great performance on that day is tenfold. And uh, how does it feel to represent Flagstaff so well in this race? Uh, it feels great. Like uh, with Flagstaff, a uh, huge community of runners out here, a lot of uh, outdoor type people that are, like, we run into all the time on the roads, on the trails, and uh, even on the track. Just uh, everybody knows each other, and it's a very uh, tight-knit community, so it feels great to uh, represent the city so well, and I'm um, happy to do it. And how does altitude training help you? Um, it helps me immensely just being up here at 7,000 feet. It's uh, obviously a little bit tougher to run at, than at sea level, but uh, we, it helps uh, stimulate the legs a little bit more, just uh, able to run just as far as I would at sea level. It takes longer to recover, but once I get uh, down to sea level, um, just feel so much better and I'm able to run quicker and utilize the uh, altitude as well as I can. And what was it like being in Boston a year after the bombings? Uh, it was pretty exciting. Um, I, my, I knew I was go wanted to go out there uh, since day one last year um, just to show my respect to the race and just show them that we're, I support the race and I want them to know that I want to be out there and show that we're not going to be uh, stopped from these tragic events and everything. Uh, but the crowds were probably five times as big as they normally are. I've been out there a couple times, and it was just so loud, just tunnels and of like cheers and like lots of fans chanting USA and just cheering us on and just uh, bringing the adrenaline in our legs up and making this feel so much better than we would feel normally in a 26-mile race. So it's uh, definitely very exhilarating type of feeling out there with the, all those crowds, and it was kind of a celebration for the city itself. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming in, and congratulations again. For more information on Nick's race, please go to nazToday.com. 
The reporters of Northern Arizona communicate the local, state, and regional news to you, letting you know the most current events happening in Northern Arizona community. That's right, and tonight, NAZ Today's Kaylee George gathered news from the sources who communicate these happenings in this week's High Country Roundup. We are starting off your High Country Roundup in Kingman this week, where the city's fire and police departments are being kept on their toes. A suspected serial arsonist has been reported to the departments after four separate brush fires were started. Now, firefighters responded to one after receiving word of a home shed being set to flames, but all flames were contained by the fire department and kept from spreading to other homes. Heading over to Page, the Lake Power Chronicle is saying that major changes to home meters will be switched in the community. Page Utility Enterprises is swapping all electronic meters to smart meters. Concern in the community is rising, and residents are claiming that the smart meters will cause damage. Now, despite this negative feedback, managers of Page Utility Enterprises are assuring that this change is necessary. As our journey continues to the Verde Valley, the Verde Independent writes on Saturday that the Amigos del Verde Valley Volunteer Coalition will lead the Lend a Hand Yard Effort. This event is set to benefit the elderly and those with disabilities. Those heading to Williams over the weekend should keep their heads in the clouds on Saturday as all kites of shapes and sizes will take to the skies, celebrating the spring. The community, community will be holding a kite festival and the first 100 kids to attend will receive a free kite to fly. But you can bring your own to join in on the fun. There will also be activities like face painting and crafts, something the entire family can enjoy. This spring fling is a free event that will be held at Curitan Park at 11 a.m. Rounding up your news in the high country and reporting for NAZ Today, I'm Kaylee George. Coming up, award-winning author Demetria Martinez visits the studio. And see how NAU students are celebrating Earth Week. Stay with us. Some high clouds out there for us earlier this morning, but they did move away. As you can see, they moved right out of northern Arizona for us to have a beautiful, sunny afternoon. And yes, the rumors are true, snow and rain. Uh, later on in the forecast, I'll tell you know, I'll let you know when coming up. I was an ordinary guy, but I switched to Suddenlink's new internet. And now I can't stop being awesome because it's the fastest in town. Downloads, uploads, any kind of load, everything just flows at speeds 13 times faster than phone company DSL. Even when the whole family is online, there's no buffering. With DSL, we were suffering. Yep, anything the phone company can do, I can do faster. Now that I have the next big thing from Suddenlink, now that I have a house full of easy. Pretty much a good day for me would be people leaving their hands off of me. I'm always called names. Um, everywhere that I go, there's always someone um, calling me names, calling me gay. I've been choked, thrown up against the wall, punched. Nobody's ever tried to help me. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. <laughs> Terrifying. Mm. Just the scariest undead subhuman mm. thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they oh. see you, so I'm gonna have to block you. <sighs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're they're blocked too. <sighs> Welcome back. Well, we all know that immigration is an often disputed topic, especially here in Arizona. And because it is Immigration Awareness Month, NAU has taken measures to formally educate students on the controversial topic. That's right. NAZ Today reporter Monet Gunn spoke with speaker and author Demetria Martinez to see her opinion on the issue of immigration. I'm here today with Demetria Martinez, who's having a talk tonight at NAU in Klein Library. Thank you for joining us in studio. Thank you. <laughs> it's great to be here. <laughs> So what is the message that you're trying to get across in your talk tonight? Um, about 27 years ago, the United States government charged me with uh, conspiracy in connection with helping Salvadoran refugees into the United States uh, illegally. Um, 
eventually I was found uh, not guilty on First Amendment grounds. Uh, um, the words of that beloved <laughs> amendment are on your building. Um, uh, the jury found that, in fact, I had been along with people who were smuggling refugees into the country, but I had gone to tell the story as a reporter, and therefore I was protected because of the First Amendment, freedom of the press. So in your, I noticed in your books you use a lot of your own experience. How do you use your experiences to relate to immigration awareness? Because I know that's this month. Right. I um, uh, write a lot about activists, and uh, I write a lot about uh, their um, how they cross borders, um, borders of nationality, borders of culture, uh, personal and political borders. Um, how they dissent, how they stand up to uh, the powers that be. So I write about activists, and I, I, as a journalist, I've also concentrated heavily on, on border issues, and in particular the immigrant deaths that are happening at Arizona's southern border. Cool. So what about some, I know you worked with the um, Jardins Institute about sustainable um, Food and oh, the Jardines Institute. Yeah. Yes, Sorry I about yes, I've been involved with Jardines. We have a community garden in a in a poor area in uh, Albuquerque, and um, we are uh, co very concerned about food security issues, about the issue of, of toxics, um, uh, environmental uh, justice, uh, and um, uh, and. So it's, um, it's really an, an amazing uh, community organizing group, and I've just been really excited to be a part of that. And I'm also working with the Coalition for Prisoners' Rights uh, in New Mexico. Two-thirds of, of people who are in prison are people of color, even though people of color commit crimes at exactly the same rate that white people do. Uh, but white people don't get into prison <laughs> at the same rate. So that is one of my big passions now as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. To find out more information about her talk and her books, be sure to check out our website at naztoday.com. While Earth Day may have been yesterday, Earth Week continues. That's right, and here in Flagstaff, student organizations around NAU gathered today to help promote sustainability and going green. The organizations met with NAZ Today's Carrie Lorenz earlier to talk about the importance of sustainability in the community. As we all know, Earth Day was yesterday, but the events are still going on all week long. Students from different clubs and organizations are out here today to share the work that they do in the Slug Garden and encourage others to join. They are out here tabling for Earth Day events behind the SBS West and enjoying the beautiful day outside. Campus groups like Sustainable Living, Urban Gardening, Student Health Advisory Council, and Total Liberation are participating in this week. We are out here on this beautiful, blustery day. Beautiful, amazing day. This is one of the best days we've had, I think, to celebrate Earth Day and Earth Week in general, to get together all the different clubs. We have Slug, we have Velo here, we have tons of other Earth-based clubs here to share their work. I help coordinate the Velo composting program here on campus. Velo is sort of French slang for bike or to bike. And so our organization is all about using bicycles to transport composting materials such as coffee grounds and vegetable waste from places on campus that are too obscure or too small to be accessed by any use normal composting program. So we pick up where they leave off. The various clubs and groups are showing off their hard work in different sustainable projects that they created. So I'm here with Mara to support the Total Liberation Action Research Team and we're here with our Veganic Plot and we're promoting Veganic Gardening which is organic gardening but it's also um, not using any non-human animal products so it's free of manure, it's free of fish emulsion um, and it's all plant-based materials. This week has become more than just an obligation, it has become a lifestyle for these students. They are encouraging others to get involved and enjoy the wonderful week as well. Happy Earth Week, everybody. I'm reporter Carrie Lorenz. And I'm videographer Miguel Alvarez. For NAZ today. today. <laughs> it's been another windy day in Flagstaff. Should we start bundling up? Student forecaster Brooke Cowell will let you know. 
And coming up in sports, can NAU's club baseball team look forward to the playoffs this year? Tressa Tudrick has that and more coming up in sports. I bought Pepsi next. What's Pepsi next? It's the latest cola from Pepsi. It's got real cola taste, but 60% less sugar. Real cola taste, 60% less sugar. Mm. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But this is the most impressive thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Let me get the camera. <laughs> I've never had anything like it. Oh, my parents are gonna. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna be so proud. Pepsi next. Drink it to believe it. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Keep up with NAZ Today by adding us on Facebook, following our Twitter account at NAZ Today and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Stay connected with us no matter where you are. Tonight's NAZ Today weather is brought to you in part by Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac in Flagstaff. Student forecaster Brooke Cal, thanks for joining us. Pretty warm day out there. It was for us today as these high clouds that were there this morning moved their way right on out of northern Arizona, bringing us a nice sunny day and bringing just about everyone around the state a little bit lower temperatures with that cold front that stayed with us a little bit today. It was 69 in Page, 72 over there in Kingman, 69 down there for you in Prescott, 80 for you in Camp Verde, and 59 for us here in Flagstaff, which is a little bit below the average for this time of year. We haven't seen that lately. Around this time, we've been kind of above the average this past week. But those temperatures will rise for tomorrow. It's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. Precipitation still is pretty low, but hopefully with this storm that I will be telling you about a little bit later, that will help us out with that and get us back to the average. But like I said, warm day for us tomorrow. It's going to be beautiful, probably the nicest day of the week that we have seen so far. But skipping ahead all the way to Saturday, here's this storm that I was going to tell you a little bit about. We are going to get snow. Saturday it will come in. I skipped Friday a little bit, but I'm going to tell you this. This storm that's coming in will bring it and make it very windy for us on Friday and will drop our temperatures to our lower degrees on Friday as well. So we'll start getting that cooler temperature on Friday into Saturday. Snow above 6,000 feet. 7,000 feet will get about 2 to 3 inches of snow on Saturday and that should be gone by Sunday morning. And for our current temperature right now, 57 degrees out, sunny, beautiful day, winds only at 7 miles per hour, not your typical spring day here for us in Flagstaff. Tonight, th uh, 28 degrees, clear with those light winds, that cold front is out of here, and before that new one rolls in, it's going to be a beautiful day for us tonight and tomorrow here in northern Arizona. Sunset at 7.06, make sure you catch that after the show, it's going to be a beautiful one. If you didn't catch one last night, I thought it was amazing. Tomorrow, 65 degrees, sunny and warmer before that storm comes in. Like I said, one of the most beautiful days we have seen so far this week in northern Arizona. For us across the state, it was hottest for you down there in Phoenix at 91 degrees. Lake Havasu just behind at 90. Prescott for you, 74. Like I said, temperatures were a little bit lower for everyone around the state today. 69 in Sholo, 65 for us here in Flagstaff today. For our extended forecast, 65 tomorrow, 63 on Friday, and we will start to see that wind come in Saturday. With that storm approaching, we will get some rain and snow, about two to three inches for us here in Flagstaff. Sunday, storm will be gone and temperatures will begin to rise for next week. For you down there in Sedona, warm temperature for you guys tomorrow, 78 degrees. Wind on Friday for you guys too, and you will also see showers on Saturday, getting down to 54 degrees for you guys. I'm really not looking forward to like the wind and the cold. I thought it was gone. Uh, well, tomorrow's gonna be gorgeous, so soak it up. I don't yeah, know. that wind might true. affect some That's baseball true. though, right? Trissa? If I didn't have class, it's just 
Yeah, I think, I don't know, I'm not really digging this weather for the weekend coming up possibly with the NEU football game, but I'll tell you about it when we come back. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Hey everybody, heart disease affects one in every three women in America, but you can fight back. There's no time to lose. Mothers, sisters, daughters, families, and friends, it's time to shout louder, stand stronger, and demand change. Let's go! To the Batmobile! Dang it. To the invisible jet! Dang it. Together, we can put an end to heart disease. It's time to go red for women. I could use your help. Yeah! Learn more from the American Heart Association at www.goredforwomen.org. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. Every day, kids <laughs> witness bullying. Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. I already knew that I was going to go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science, become the mayor or something, make the situation better for other people. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. Starting things on the diamond, the NEU club baseball team went 12 and 6 in conference play and 17 and 12 overall, and has a shot of making the playoffs. Senior captain Austin Duarte said the program is excited for what lies ahead. This is the most successful year we've had to date. Three years in existence, and we got second place in the conference as of right now. Um, I mean, I couldn't have been more proud of my guys this year. Just what we went through, playing so many games, traveling every weekend, playing games every weekend. Our play, like. Couple games, couple wrong bounces here and there, and we sh we could win the conference right now. We'd be on our way to regionals no matter what, um, but we still have a shot. Um, to find out within a couple days, I guess, if we make playoffs or not. So, playoff schedules won't be released until next Tuesday this weekend. The Jacks are on the road, making up missed games from earlier this season. In high school baseball yesterday, the Coconino Panthers' 11-10 win over the Tempe Buffaloes was a close call that almost went in Tempe's favor when the game went into the bottom of the seventh with the Buffalo lead. Senior pitcher Diego Johnson was happy the team pulled it off. It feels, uh, it feels good but bad at the same time. We obviously came out a little shaky to begin with. It's a team we sh that shouldn't have been that close, but um, we came down at the end. We, had a, we didn't hit our best, but we came through at the end. The Panthers travel on Friday to Mingus Union. The game starts at 345. The Flagstaff Eagles 19-0 shutout over the Mojave Thunderbirds was the highest scoring game of the Eagles season. If you take a look at their top five games, the Eagles know how to score some runs. This helps Flagstaff, who is 19-5 overall, 3-2 in conference play and have three regular season games to go. Flagstaff plays host the Kingman Bulldogs on Friday at 330. The Bulldogs have yet to win a game in the conference. The Northland Prep Academy Spartans baseball team played host to the Seligman Antelopes this afternoon. If you take a look at the Antelopes and Spartans' last games, Seligman is on a two-game losing streak, while NPA has won four of their last five games. The Antelopes are 2-8 and eight in conference play. The Spartans are 6-4. and four. It's coming this weekend. The NEU football team blue versus gold game will take place at Lumberjack Stadium. Senior quarterback Chase Cartwright wants everyone to come out and have some fun. 
Oh yeah, I'm. We're stoked. You know, we're expecting over. I mean, hopefully over 2,000 people. We're having a pre-game party for the spring game and a post-game party. I know there's going to be a big-time raffle for quite a sum of money, fans. So, we're excited that everybody is rallying around NEU football. We're we're excited that people are getting involved, and I think it's important for us to get involved with you know the student body and Greek life, and and you know just get, you know get the message that football team wants to be involved, and and then we're coming. The festivities begin at noon and the game will start at 2. If you can't catch the game, you can catch all the action right here on Channel 4 or on Fox Sports Arizona. The Arizona Diamondbacks played game two against the Cubs yesterday. JJ puts in trouble bottom of the eighth with bases loaded and two outs walks Luis Valbuena and scores Starling Castro. Some pitching chit chat to hopefully change things up. Still bases loaded and Justin Rigiano lines a single into right field scoring two more Cubs. This game was rough for the Diamondbacks who currently hold the worst record in the majors. They lose this one nine to two but today it was a different anthem for the Diamondbacks as they won seven to five against the Cubs. So you know their first win in 11 games. A nice change for the Diamondbacks to come out with the win. You know, it seems like we've been talking so much how bad the Diamondbacks have been doing <laughs> yeah, lately this exactly. month. So I'm glad they got that win in today. First one in 11 games, so hopefully that's a prediction for I the rest the of the games. I think early games tend to do better for them. Exactly. Actually. We'll I see how know. it The D-backs definitely are not having a good time right <laughs> <No>. now. <laughs> we'll be right back. Changing your oil and filter offers many benefits to prolong the life of your vehicle. Regularly changing the oil in your car can significantly give your car a longer life. Another benefit of an oil change is gaining fuel mileage. When changing your oil and filter, not only will you be a safer driver, but you will also have the advantage of an improved insurance rate. This week's car tip was brought to you by Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac, located on Highway 66. Morning, KJAC listeners. It's 68 degrees currently, so be sure to put on a coat for your morning commute. Traffic is light, so enjoy your drive to wherever the road is taking you. KJAC Radio, 1680 AM. For you. Beautiful day tomorrow, 65 degrees before that wind starts to hit us on Friday and even before that snow gets to us on Saturday. We're forecasting two to three inches of snow for us here in Flagstaff. For you down in Sedona, beautiful day for you guys tomorrow as well, 78 degrees tomorrow before you guys get your sh showers on Saturday with 54 degrees. On Wednesday, the Hopi tribe held a ceremony to honor Code Talkers. The event at Second Mesa paid tribute to the 10 men who left the reservation to serve in the Asian Pacific area during World War II. Code Talkers used their native language as a secret communication during wartime. We will have the full story on tomorrow night's broadcast. That definitely looks like a good one, so be sure yeah. that you turn in. So that's going to do it for us here at NAZ Today. Thanks for tuning in. For more information on any of our stories, you can go ahead and check out our website, naztoday.com.